Today we have our second interview, our talk, and today we have a very special guest, but I'll introduce him later, and now I'll do a short introduction to what we're going to discuss today. Today we'll be talking about the peer pressure faced by students at the universities, and before we start, I just want to ask our listeners a couple of questions so you can relate to the issue more. Have you ever felt like you think you have to do something in order to fit in, in order to be accepted by the university community? Have you made yourself do something, not necessarily what you enjoyed, in order to impress others, in order to be the cool guy or the cool girl? And it's completely fine to say yes. Like we've all been here. I can say for myself, like I've been there. I've done some things I partly regret now because I felt peer pressure. Uh, and maybe Hilary here will also say that he's done something else. So Hilary is an international student from Angola. Uh, he's very passionate about art uh, and he's very proactive at the university as well. And that's partly why we actually invited you to join us today because I think your experience will be very valuable in discussing how the adaptation period is to the university, what it was like for you, uh, how, so what the adaptation period was for Hilo like, uh, whether you faced peer pressure, what it was like, or maybe it was all fine and bright for you and you haven't actually experienced any of it. So we'll discuss it today. Um, so yeah, how was the adaptation period to the university for you? Maybe uh, what challenges have you faced or concerns you had, or was it quite easy and fun? So again, uh, hi, so Ale. Again, uh, hi, Ale. What a nice opportunity to talk about this topic with you here. Um, so adaptation university, it was, I would say it was challenging, uh, especially for my first year. So before university, I was doing foundation in Manchester. And I used to live with three Angolan friends. And then when we applied to university, so I was the only one who got embarked. So I have to split from them. And when I got to a new city, so university, it seems all very nice. But I didn't realize I was there by myself. And um, so I was, I was looking to do some extra activity, find something interesting uh, so that I could meet more people and not be, and not be by myself. Um, so I stayed in accommodation with like eight, eight students. So we had our own rooms, uh, our own bathroom. We shared a kitchen. So it was nice, uh, good people. So we, we did play football together and did other stuff. But I never was, I never felt like I was really um, their friends, maybe because I had different interests, so so they like to go out and go party, and at that time I didn't used to drink, so uh, I was like, I have to go out with them, but if I go out with them, it means I have to drink so I can have more fun and be part of the group. So I had so for the first semester I was like maybe I just go gonna give it a try and see how it goes. So I start going party and uh, go to the freshest weeks and all the events. Um, so do you think it was yeah. hard at the beginning or was it hard throughout your year with them? I would say it was hard. It was hard in the beginning. It was hard in the beginning. So uh, it was me there, the, someone who was only used to live with the people from the same nationality. And then I'm living with people from different nationalities and none of them were Angolans. So we had different cultures. So sometimes they would talk about things that only they know and I'll be like kind of lost. And I'll try to say something, but it doesn't make many sense. So, and then later I was just, you know, kind of staying quiet. And then for a moment, I kind of just start to stay in my room and do my own things until they just, uh, they stop inviting me to go out. And it kind of makes sense, you know, because you don't want to keep inviting someone who doesn't want to go out. So yeah, I agree that. and that's, I assume the point where the social isolation starts. And when we start feeling lonely, like nobody gets us, we want to find friends, but we actually can't due to different reasons. So yeah, I understand. And if we talk about the freshers week, uh, also known as the welcome week or the party week, and we've all been there, we've all parted enough. So how did it go for you? Did you party a lot? Did you enjoy it? Or did you stay <laughs> home most of the time? So freshers week, um, 
I went out once with my flatmate and I immediately didn't like. So it was party and getting drunk. And I was like, well, I don't drink. How am I going to force to have fun then? So I just, I've, I just avoided the freshest week. Uh, but I did went to the society's week because it was something that I found interesting. I was like, okay, maybe I should start something now. It's more about activity and less about partying. So freshest week is not good, but society week was good for me. Yeah, and just to talk more about the Freshers' Week and how it can actually impact the students, what were the most challenging things? What do you think? The In most terms of the peer pressure. Mm, so it's because um, students, they, they want to fit in. So we want to do things with other students and we want to be, you know, we have, having fun. So what happened is when we are applying for university, so we go to their websites and we see all these funny things they post in the, on the social media, on their webpage, you know, students having fun. So we want to get that experience. We want to be a part of it. So we have people who will be inviting us to go out party and drink, like, okay, let's play this game. Let's go out. So they put some pressure, but I believe most of the pressure come inside us. So because we are the ones who want to fit in. So people will invite us because it's normal. So I want to do with, I want to do something with you. So have fun. I don't know you yet. So it's common that I will I invite you to do something that I do, which is party. So I just invite you to do my things. But if you don't party, then you'll be like, oh, I don't party, but I have to because this is the only way I have. I don't know if I invite them to do my stuff, they're going to find impressive. So mm -hmm. the pressure starts to come, most of the pressure starts to come in out inside us. Yeah. I completely agree. And also, um, do you remember by any chance what party you actually visited? What was the theme of that party during the freshman city? The theme of that party? Uh, I think it was something related to dark. <laughs> it, it, was like, it was like four years that's ago. That's a nice so I, innocent one, because... The ones I visited and the ones which actually shocked me were, for example, like anything but close. I'm not sure you had it in your year, but we had it like anything but close. And you were actually supposed to wear uh, not clothes, basically. And like, like you can see lots of girls were wearing mostly nothing. Or also, I think one of the themes was uh, snow pants or no pants at all. And this is a very sexualized theme. And I think the worst one actually was back to school one. And I know that it's one of the most popular ones, but at the same time, it's the most sexualized one. Like, can you imagine girls are supposed to wear uh, the short skirts and be like a school girl? Like, I disagree that it should be a common thing, but then the university seems to encourage it. Like they had flyers and posters of all the themes all over the universities and how pressuring is that? I see, you know, I see it's completely true. Uh, so I think what there is, there is a trend now where I you know people uh, are becoming more kind of trying, they want to show something, you know, they want to show that they're cool and, uh, you know, like they can do whatever they want. So, so the, university, the university does advertise all these events. But one thing that we need to think about is, okay, even though the university does that, but there also are there are also students involved in that. So people who come out come up with this with this with this idea with these events. So we need to understand that uh, the student union, the university, the university is us. We are the university. So what happened is, I think we need to think we need to think more about the other, other students. So. So having these themes that are very, you know, um, sexualized and all this part, these kind of things. So it is, it is something that I don't, I don't really find attractive. But if I wanted to fit in again, so I have to go ahead and try to do something that in the future I might regret doing it. So yeah. it is something I'm like... I was surprised how many girls actually enjoyed it. Like they looked so passionate about not wearing anything or wearing the short skirts and like being almost naked. Like they actually enjoyed it. And it seems almost like they think that's the only way they can fit in. Yeah, and the, now the question is, do they actually enjoy it or they just show that they're enjoying it? So that's the thing. So 
people and they're not always you not know, honest with themselves. So I remember that when I when I start drinking because I want to socialize, oh, I start to think, you know, drink. I, I think drink is cool. So I need to drink. I need to get drunk so that you know I feel like I'm cool, and then I can t- talk about all these stories about being drunk and not remember ever anything that happened, all these kind of things. So, but then I realized I start asking myself questions: Am I being honest with myself, or I just want to be accepted? So I can show you, I can show you that, okay, I'm having fun drinking or going to all this party, but inside I'm completely the opposite. So that's when we start to build up all this depression and isolation thought. But you're very lucky that you are so self-conscious and you actually are in touch with yourself. But as a psychologist, I can say, I can say that almost no one is like you and no one is in touch with their own feelings. So they just go with the flow and they see where it leads them. So that's a big problem as well. And I have another question. Uh, which groups of people or types of people do you think are more prone to submitting to peer pressure? Mm. To be honest, I don't, be honest, I don't, I don't I, there is a type of people or type of groups that are more, you know, vulnerable to peer fraction. It also, it always depends on the, you know, on the event zone. So there's a lot of, of uh, there's a lot of things that can happen to a student's life that involves on the peer fraction. So you, you can have people who, you know, they were, you know, used to just stay at home with, with their parents. And then suddenly that they went to university, they that they by themselves. And then you can have cases of international students who just moved to the UK to go to university. And then the same thing, different culture. So they start feeling that pressure. Okay, if I if I want to learn about this culture, if I want to want to be a really a student in university, so I need to I need to go to these events. So I believe there's a lot of factors that influence on that. So I cannot really picture a group of, of people that are being uh, so being vulnerable to these uh, to these events. True, but actually, coming from a psychology background, I looked at the statistics mm. in terms of the peer pressure, and I found that men are actually so much more prone to being pressured into doing something they don't want to do. And I was quite surprised because we have this common stereotype that men are so strong and they they lead the way; they don't submit. But it appears the opposite, and actually, men do submit more. What do you think about the statistics, and why do you think that might be the trend? Mm. I would say we like to be, you know, seen as a tough. So we men we strong, we tough. We can see like, you know, the adrenaline. Like we do anything, so nothing scares me. I think this is what happens. So that's why you probably you're gonna have, you know, like on these parties you now, like games where to see who drinks the most so you probably maybe a guy who doesn't drink much but because he, he wants to show off you know something like that to his, his friends like no i'm tough i'm strong i never i never i never show you guys i never show you like my drinking abilities but i'm gonna show you now so and then mm-hmm. they just drink i don't know how many bottles he wants and that night and then that's it that's what happened so i believe because we men we want to show that we tough we strong so and we not fear, we not fear, we don't fear anything. So that what happened. Yeah. And what advice would you give to our listeners who might be struggling with peer pressure? How do you think you can stay true to yourself and not submit to what others want you to be, or you actually yourself think you ought to be? So it took me a while uh, to start understand more about myself. So what I did is I always try to be honest with me. And uh, whenever I could, I would talk to my parents or friends from back home and try to ask questions like, how do they see me? This kind of things. What do they do when they're around this kind of events? So I always find something that matches me. So I always try to put my interest as a priority. So I need to feel good in myself. Otherwise, it doesn't matter what I do. It's, it's, not, it's not going to take me anywhere. So that's why I started like thinking maybe if I stop doing this, if I stop drinking and then if, if I stop partying, I know that I'm going to lose a lot of people. But I didn't ask myself, if I lose these people, would they ever be my friends or they just they want to go out with me because I was doing this and doing that? 
So when I started asking myself these questions, uh, what I wanted to do, what's it, what does it mean? What does it mean to be a friend? So what I need from a friend. So that's when I realized, okay, I need to be myself and I need to find these people. But also the only way to find these people is actually to try to connect to as, as many, you know, as many students as possible. Um, I never was the kind of person that would go to someone and start talking. But because I was exposed to, you know, societies like Salsa as a place where people dance and people talk. So slowly I started to learn, okay, I need actually to say something because this is the only way I may find something in common between another person. And then we can talk more about it and then start to develop and stuff. So I would say, find what you want, what you like, ask you questions to yourself, you know, be honest with yourself. And don't be afraid to ask for advice to parents and other friends from you know, home, back home or high school. Okay, that's great. That's actually very deep. I enjoyed it. Uh, and also, what do you think are the triggers? Uh, in other words, how can a student realize that he or she are not on the right path? And they're actually not doing what they enjoy and they are submitting to peer pressure. So what do you think are those like little things you can identify that you are submitting to somebody else's interests? Um, I would say when, uh, so when, for example, in a group, people want to do something, you probably like the one who, I don't speak the last, or you are afraid of make a suggestion. I noticed that. So whenever I want to do, let's say I'm in the middle of people who like football, but I love, I don't know, playing tennis. So I would hardly suggest people to play tennis because I already know that they like football. So I'll be like, mm, should I say this or should I not? And uh, also, we start in having second thoughts when we're doing something. So for example, for me, I noticed like whenever I was drinking, you know, um, I always would have like a second thought. Is that, is that really nice? It's like, is that really cool? Do I like this? It's, I don't know, it's weird. So I start to pay attention to all these things. And also, would people listen to you? So when you meet a meeting with friends, you make a suggestion. So people will, they will tend to listen to you if they are really your friends. And if they don't like the idea of if they don't want to do that now, they probably someone will probably suggest, well, it's it's something that I would like to you know to try it, but let's book that for another day because maybe today is is easier to do this, and then another day we can do that. So this kind of things, people if you make a suggestion and then people will be like they will listen to you and propose something as well so that you guys can set up something but when you're not in the in the right group so you probably just be ignored or you kind of feel that the atmosphere is not good enough for you to say something because it's just it's not related to you yeah and dear listeners you can definitely listen to hillary because you're now what a final year and you're also leader of the salsa community of the salsa society so you definitely found your people you're not scared to be who you are and who you actually want to be so i can say that i highly doubt that you submit to peer pressure <laughs> <Or at least laughs> well, sometimes. not very often not very often so always trying to you know try to balance so the only, the only way for me to do something new to learn something is by you know doing different things so if a friend suggests something new out okay it seems it seems interest interesting tell me more about it and then i i try it if it's good i'll carry on if it's not good i just i just stop it but yeah like i said before like it, it, it took me time you know but yeah when i when i found the salsa society uh it was great i found people who had the same interest as me which was learning dancing there was uh, not much involved so mm -hmm. and that's how I start, and here we go. It's like today I know quite a lot of people, you know, people who has graduated, people who have went back to their countries, but we're still in touch and, you know, invite each other to go out, this kind of things. Yeah, so there definitely should be a balance between not blocking new experience, but also not submitting to what you actually don't want to do. But if you don't try it, you can never know. So maybe yeah. a good advice would be try it out but then immediately see whether it's something you might enjoy or not, even in the long term, even in a perspective. 
Also, we have a final question for you. What role do you think the university plays in encouraging this type of environment, the pirating environment? Or do you actually think the university does enough in terms of protecting students from it? Mm. I think the university could do more. So the university, so they, they host all these events. So they, they need to think, okay, what, what, what is good for the student? What, what is good for the teenagers or the young adults? So even though, like, okay, you know, we students, we pro probably say, like, propose something to the university, you know, we want to do this event. So, but I think the university needs to question more about this event. So what is involved and maybe, I don't know, like having people who are more experienced in these kind of areas. Uh, I know that there's a, the support at the university about, you know, this peer practice psychology support, but mm. this is something I only found like this year. So my third year. So I don't think it is the, those services that are exposed enough at the university. They may be there, but they're not exposed enough. People, students are not really aware of it. So maybe they should push more this. Yeah, they definitely advertise the pressure suite more than they advertise supporting events. Yeah, that's a big problem, but hopefully they can change it soon. Okay, that was sure. our last question. Thank you very much. It's been very great talking to you and very valuable experience you brought to this conversation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alice. It was good to talk to you. Thank you.